Hippocrates is a free open access website created by the Centre for Medical Education at the University of Bristol. It contains a growing number of short interactive tutorials designed to help students prepare for their face-to-face -face seminars. In this case study, Dr. Stephanie Eckhold and Dominic Alder talk about the need for the project, the pedagogy behind it, and how it supports medical students when they're on clinical placements at hospitals around the United Kingdom. Essentially the project was um, conceived to support third year medical students in particular. So this is the um, first clinical year of a five year medical course that they go through at the University of Bristol. And it's essentially a series of uh, basic web pages um, with uh, a navigatable menu on the left hand side. Uh, and within those pages we add uh, various interactive exercises. A typical tutorial would cons consist of say 10, 10 to 15 questions. Um, and these questions would be based around a case study or <clears throat> an image, uh, a medical image or, or um, a sentence or, or a phrase and we'd have to answer questions. We've tried to keep those quite short so students can do them either the day before or even just the morning of their face-to-face -face teaching session so it's like just in time teaching, it's there, it's ready for them, it's, you know, it's in their, in their brain and then they can apply it. And that would basically give us the core scientific knowledge that was required to then complete the second part which would be a group tutorial in in our clinical environment with a led by a facilitator who would be a doctor in that particular area. This is the Hippocrates uh, website that we've we've built. I'm um, first of all going to go into the medicine and surgery section which is uh, is slowly being populated with material and I'm going to go down into the renal section and find the AKI acute kidney injury core topic. So the idea is that the students study the AKI tutorial um, in their own time before they then go to the seminar based on that on that tutorial. So the students are given some, um, some tables and things that they can apply in some of the exercises as they go through. We would expect them to download these, print them out and have them next to them as they go through the, uh, go through the tutorial. They're given a basic warm-up exercise to start with and this is stuff they should really already know, this is nothing new to them. But it's just to give them a warm-up as they start to go through the tutorial. And then as they go through, they're given um, layered information. Um, for example, in, in this um, uh, in this page, the, the core information that they need to take away is presented on the page itself. If they want to go into some of the definitions in more detail, then they can go into the pop-up links underneath, such as this one here. There are various interactive questions and things that they can uh, study as they go through. Some of them give them uh, instant feedback, uh, such as these ones on the screen. Uh, some of the others, um, we ask them to think, actually think about the question, maybe write it down, and then look at the feedback. Uh, and then they've got something written down that they can then compare with what's on the screen and they can take all that forward into the seminar with them. We also use this tool um, in various places in the exercises we're going to show you. Uh, it's essentially a labelling tool, so it allows you to drag, uh, drag labels into the table and uh, the user can be prevent, pre presented with feedback as to whether they got the answer right or wrong. Um, it's quite a flexible tool, it's called Dragster, and there's lots of different ways it can be used. As well as the core topic uh, material that I've just shown you that's divided up into specialties, uh, there's other sections as well because the website was really designed not just to, um, to give people uh, core topic teaching, but also to help them adjust to life in clinical medicine. So there's these sections down the left hand side uh, that you can see that, uh, that help students uh, adjust to that. So there's this one um, that covers uh, a lot of the, the key concerns that students have when they go out onto the wards. But there's also the video library which goes through, it's, it's, not, it's not the whole stage of managing the complaint, but it's the actual examination part of it. Um, and there are some there are various videos uh, as we go through this. And I'll just go into a couple of them here. So let's start with the cranial nerves examination. This was actually written by a student um, a few years ago, and uh, they did an excellent job with this tutorial. So I'll go into some of the videos that they produced. Okay, Sean, can you just cover up your left eye for me? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to cover up my opposite eye now. Okay, brilliant. And can you just tell me when you see my finger wiggling? So I'm first assessing Sean's uh, temporal field in his right eye. Okay? Yep. Uh, this was the first uh, video tutorial that Steph and I produced. Um, this is a, an examination of the cardiovascular system. The, uh, the examination is divided up into the key aspects, uh, which are each presented with a video clip. Essentially, you just gently put your fingers on both of the radial pulses and wait to make sure that the pulses are timed at exactly the same point. 
Uh, some are built into questions with feedback, uh, different videos as to whether the student gets the, uh, the question right or wrong. And then at the end of the, uh, the, end of the tutorial, the, uh, the presenter goes through the examination as if the camera isn't there. Okay. Do you have any pain in your shoulder at all? Okay, what I'm going to do is just lift your arm up. I mean, one of the best things about the tutorial was the ease of use. Um, as soon as it was uploaded, it was really self-explanatory where you could go. You really feel set up for the tutorial when you go there, which is something that you don't always feel. And we felt it was something that we could always revisit, say there were things that we didn't fully understand. Overall, they responded very well to it. They liked the fact that they knew what they were going to be dealing with in a face-to-face -face session. They, they liked the fact that they were prepared and they felt generally more confident. Almost entire, the entirety of the students, in my experience, had done the tutorial did come with questions, came with ideas, and, and had that knowledge that made the, the group tutorial a lot more dynamic, a lot more interesting. Um, and I think the facilitators found it more rewarding that we could all participate in the discussion because we had that prior knowledge before turning up to tutorials. The transition from a medical student to a student doctor happens in these three clinical years and at the end of that you need skills and knowledge but you also need to have developed adult learning behaviour. So a lot of the setup and the way the tutorials run was, was driven by how do we do this, how do we make these people into independent learners. The idea was that by giving them this structure of preparation and then face-to-face -face teaching they would learn the um, the benefit of preparation. I think setting up for things in advance is something that we should be doing but maybe aren't maybe aren't doing and I think this gives us the encouragement to be preparing in advance which is what we should have been doing all along. And also within the tutorials we've tried to introduce things like if you don't know about this look it up, look it up in a book, you know look if you don't know about this drug look it up in a book so not just give everyone well here's a pop-up box that tells you what this does, no you need to go outside and you need to look stuff up and because that's, that's simulating the real situation when these students are doctors. We were really keen to make teaching more rewarding and more efficient for the, for the teachers. We've taken time to educate people and spend time showing them how easy the resource is to use and some of the resources that are on it. And once you actually can show people, in a, you know, even the teachers in a supported environment, how to use these things and how to look at them, um, we've had really good feedback from them. I think this whole project has been really worthwhile. Uh, I think there's a long way to go with the website. If you go into the website, there's a lot of empty spaces that we need to work on. Um, but I think as a concept, uh, having an open access resource with some really high quality material, um, it's, been, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great thing to work on and we're really excited by where it's going. I think there's definitely scope for um, getting co contribution from other institutions and also from other countries. And I think really working towards an open access network you know, of, of knowledge for medicine specifically would be absolutely fantastic.